Welcome to EU Tweets of the Week. Puigdemont in Brussels causes excitement. There's an EU connection to those US indictments. And happy Halloween. We hope you weren't frightened. They seek him here, they seek him there. There was widespread excitement as Catalonian president Carles Puigdemont fled Barcelona for Brussels. Stavros Papageneas was curious to hear why he is here and not there. Was it to claim asylum? Or, as many suggested, for the frites, just don't order sauce andalouse? Or was it to stage the most shambolic press conference Brussels has ever seen? Hundreds of journos crammed into the tiny press centre, literally crawling over each other, as James Crisp showed, and as Parliament magazine pointed out, there wasn't even an open bar. Thankfully, we were spared more chaotic scenes the following day, as rumours of press conferences in Ghent on a Belgian bank holiday proved unfounded. The always excellent Mick Twister composed a limerick. There once was a man from Girona, a Catalan go at Alona, who ran off to Brussels when Spain flexed its muscles and made him a wanted persona. But it was Guy Verhofstadt who cut through the merriment. It might be a three-ring circus here in Brussels, but in Spain and Catalonia it's a very serious matter indeed. On Monday, it was Mueller time across the Atlantic, as special counsel former FBI chief Robert Mueller confirmed indictments against former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort, Trump aide Rick Gates and foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos. Kyle Griffin reported that Papadopoulos is bait to catch bigger fish after it was confirmed that he attempted to set up a meeting between Trump and the Russians. According to Seth Abramson, Papadopoulos was already working for Trump, meeting Greek dignitaries at the inauguration. But who is the elusive man of mystery that introduced him to Putin's circle? The Maltese professor, Joseph Mifsud, soon had European reporters chasing their tails again. But most of the best digging into Mifsud's tangled web of connections was done by John Worth and Dan Vevers. Finally interviewed in Italy, Mifsud admitted he facilitated contacts, but denied he passed on dirt on Hillary Clinton. It ain't over yet though, so watch this space. And finally, of course, this week was Halloween, so everyone tried to shoehorn a spooky message into their PR, with mixed success. Europa said the EU is still haunted by a gender pay gap and that some ghost busting is needed. Airlines for Europe asked if Europe's airports were trick or treat, saying they get super normal returns. Donald Trump Jr.'s attempt to use his daughter's Halloween haul to pillory socialism backfired badly, but a round of applause to the Belgian police who reported busier air traffic with a higher than usual number of broomsticks. This week, we are supported by the European Tech and Industry Employers Organization. Find out their thoughts on the posted workers' agreement at CEEMET. And join me again next Friday for more of the good, bad, and ugly in the Brussels bubble Twitter sphere. And send in your suggestions using the hashtag EUTweets.